All right, uh, so I wanted to make a quick video about this because there's been a lot of discussion um, about this topic um, since the start of the Dragonflight Alpha, which just came out recently. Um, there's a lot of, of other content about the actual physical game and the expansion that's come out and what to expect with that. So I'm not going to be the one to cover that one. There's a bunch of other creators that are, are better suited for that and who have put in the time and the effort to create that content. Um, what I want to talk about is this whole controversy between Blizzard and Preach and Preach not being given access to the alpha because there's a lot of he said, she said stuff going around. There's a lot of confusion about where everything stands and, you know, why I'll, you know, he wasn't granted access to the alpha. Da, 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 da. Um, I am going to slightly give my opinion on this one. But before I do that um, and before I say anything at all about what was right or what was wrong, I'm going to go through the bare bones facts about what happened between Preach and Blizzard. This is not opinion this is not subject this is what he said this is why he said it and then this is what blizzard did and there's no no if and buts about it it's the truth the whole truth nothing but the truth not subject to interpretation this is the way it happened in 2021 early mid 2021 preach made a video talking about uh shadowlands and how he was very very upset and at his wits end um as he was totally within his rights to be, and so were a lot of other players, but how he was upset about the expansion and the direction it had been taken and what Blizzard was trying to do. Keep in mind, Blizzard is in the throes of scandal and, and controversy, and not only that, but they're trying to, you know, finish this product that they've made um, almost completely from home. So, you know, they've been working remotely a lot, um, you know, especially with how strictly things were in California and da 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 um, so they were trying to, to make Shadowlands work, but it wasn't successful. And there were a lot of controversial things that they did with the game, which most of you already know. So I'm not going to get into that. Um, I'm going to go through because I've, I've listened, I re went and rewatched this content and a lot of other preachers content. And I wanted to get to the bottom of why he made the decision to stop covering, uh, Blizzard content, to stop covering World of Warcraft specifically, um, and what his thoughts were. And it basically boils down to this. So the, the first primary reason that he left, and he stated this from the outset of the video, the straw that broke the camel's back is that he was upset with the controversy surrounding Blizzard and the culture of the work there and all the stuff that was going on and, you know, the, the allegations of stuff that were flying and the investigations that they were under, that was it for him. And he took basically a moral stance on that. And I 100% support him for doing that. And I think he made the right decision in that aspect to say, hey, I'm not going to support a company or support a game developer that engages this kind of stuff until this gets fixed. 100% support that. He made a moral a moral stand there and he's well within his rights to do. So that was the first reason why he left. But then he outlined a bunch of other reasons that had to more so do with the game as to why he left. Um, he listed that he left after having to deal with uh, multiple expansions of bad systems. Totally get that. If you're looking at Battle for Azeroth, the freaking Azeroth system was bad. If you're looking at Shadowlands... Shadowlands was bad. You could point to anything there, Shards of Domination, whatever. He got very specific about it, but he basically stated that multiple expansions of bad game development was contributory as to why he no longer wanted to play or cover World of Warcraft. Um, in that, he talked about he felt that Blizzard was pushing players like him out. He felt that the difference in game ideology was too great, that he did not see the way that uh, World of Warcraft should be made or developed versus the way that Blizzard was developing it. And he felt that there was a greater and greater rift between him and World of Warcraft and what the game really should have been. That's always subject to interpretation. Obviously, the game developers will do what they want to do. So I don't necessarily think that's a valid reason to just outright drop a game unless you're like hardcore uh, married to this idea of what World of Warcraft should be, which I think, you know, uh, he was, and he's well within his rights to do that, but that's another one of the reasons he listed that he was no longer interested in, in covering World of Warcraft. <clears throat> uh, he felt let down by Blizzard. God, don't we all? Um, all the time. Um, that's fair. Multiple bad expansions, you know, them saying that they're going to do things and they don't, uh, you know, not delivering on promises, so on and so forth. I get it, but that's another one of the reasons he was critical um, of the entire Shards of Domination system, which was very valid at the 9.1 uh, release of Shadowlands, which I think was very valid. Um, there was 
a whole host of problems that were that were raised even before um, Shadowlands was released with that system, and then nine point one happens, and you know players are getting jerked around with how that system's supposed to work, and then it ends up not even mattering at all after all the hassle. So I totally understand that, but that was another one of his criticisms of the game. Uh, remember, we're going just through the reasons as to why that led up to him deciding that he no longer wanted to cover WoW. And we're going to get to the end of that here in just a minute. Um, called out Blizzard for lack of effort. I mean, that's kind of goes hand in hand with the systems. He felt like, you know, these systems, these bad systems could only have ended there if they weren't really paying attention and weren't really putting forth the effort to actually make the game what it's supposed to be. 100% understand that and agree with that. Um, he was frustrated by uh, the lack of listening to players um, that were, you know, consuming the content, that were going through it and were giving Blizzard feedback and, you know, hey, there's some problems with this and, he felt like Blizzard absolutely did not listen to him or to any other players, and that's absolutely valid. And I think that it's actually correct when you look at what feedback we were giving Blizzard and we were talking about the game, the systems that were wrong, and that these, you know, not only do some of these systems not really work, but then they're in confliction with each other. And then the fact that there's so many of them is a problem. So the fact that players are talking about that and then Blizzard doesn't listen, okay, that's a huge issue. And obviously he had an issue with that. And again, is another one of the large reasons why he wanted nothing more to do with, with WoW, why he talked about, I'm not interested in, in consuming this. Um, and then he stated, and I think this was was, was rather gentlemanly of him, and I, I think this is an important thing that needs to be highlighted. This is one of the most important things of, as to the reason as to why he left. Um, he stated, you know, in regards to not wanting to cover the content, he said he didn't want to spend the next six months bashing World of Warcraft, knowing that it wasn't going to make a difference. You know, basically said, listen, I'm not going to, I'm not going to waste my time, pull, you know, what's left of my hair out. I'm not going to, you know, bang my head against the wall um, and and make myself miserable bashing World of Warcraft for the next six months or however long it takes for 9.2, 9.3 to come along and fix all this stuff, knowing that it's the issues aren't going to be addressed and I'm just going to be miserable. He, you know, I, and I think that was fair. He said, listen, I, I don't want to, to, to bash Blizzard like this. I don't want to criticize and bemoan and whine and complain for six months about Blizzard. He said, I just, I don't want to do that, you know, he, and, and respect to him, you know, he ended up not doing that. And I think that that was probably the smarter move because, you know, if you really are, you do want to be supportive of Blizzard and, um, you know, and, and you want things to be better, you know, you want to spend your time where you know it's going to make the most good. And I think basically, you know, from what he said, it's very simple. He said, it, I'm not going to spend six months bash my head against the wall trying to get this change, but I know it's not going to change. Um, and, you know, felt that that would be, you know, not a good use of his time. And I have to say, I agree. Um, so that's sort of the majority of the reasons that he listed some of it. I'm, I'm obviously paraphrasing. Again, you need to go look at his video um, to hear exact his words. But I mean, everything I'm telling you here, you're going to find in the video. Um, I'm just summarizing it. But I, we're going to get to the most important part now, which is, I think, the thing that matters more than anything. Um, and it's what he actually said, both at the beginning of the video and then about 10, 15 minutes into the video that he reiterates, which is that. They were not going to be covering World of Warcraft content anymore. That is what he said. Justifiable reasons or not, regardless of whether or not you agree with him not covering the, the content anymore, that is what he said, that they are not covering it. That is almost verbatim what he said. It's, it's not a firm interpretation. He said, we're not covering it. He even went so far as to say that not only is he not going to be streaming it, after a, a raid situation that he had with some friends of his or whatever that situation was, that he was going to be more than likely quitting the game, that his plan was to not play it. Okay? That's what he said, that he was quitting the game. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't come back and play the game. Obviously, everybody knows that. You can quit for six months or a year, come back when the next expansion comes out to see if it's great. Absolutely, you can do that. I would encourage that, especially with Shadowlands. Just wait until Dragonfly comes out. It'll be great, hopefully, from what we've seen. But at that point in time, he was saying, hey, I'm quitting the game. Fair. The problem with that is, is that if you quit the game and say, we're not going to be doing coverage on it and we'll only come back if something interesting happens and we'll you know, maybe sort of cover it, which is again what he said, then Blizzard then has the right to say, okay, well, we're not going to give you access to the alpha. And that's this whole situation. People talking about, well, Blizzard should have given Preach access to the alpha, even though he said this, that, and the other. And you know, Blizzard should have been the bigger person. No. 
Preach said they were not going to be covering the game anymore, that they were making a second channel for different content because their whole idea was that they were supposed to be covering World of Warcraft content. That was the intention. But now, because they're not going to do that anymore, they need a new channel to experiment with stuff. Good on him. But you said you're not covering it anymore. So when you publicly declare that you're not streaming the game, you're not covering it, and that you have no intention to come back unless something truly spectacular happens, and, and which, by the way, he said that the only way he would come back is if Blizzard fixed all their cultural problems. If he, if they made a, a, a an obvious and genuine show of fixing all their issues and making sure that, you know, that the company was good and that the people that were working there were good and they were, you know, treating each other right and all this other stuff. Like, he basically said that he's not going to come back unless... You know, that Blizzard makes a genuine effort and, you know, genuinely makes progress in, in making that company, you know, honorable again, you know, worth, worth supporting that they're not going to come back. So when you state very clearly that your intention is not to cover Blizzard content in any way, shape or form until either you get, ex you know, are you get are the arbitrary things that you want or, you know, unless something perceived value wise changes and then you want to, you're not going to be given access to that. So even from a pure technical standpoint, Preach wouldn't have been on a list to get access to the alpha because he stated he didn't want to cover. They stated that they didn't want to cover World of Warcraft content anymore. And it hasn't really changed. So while I understand why he might be a little upset about not being a, getting access to the alpha, and even he admitted that, Blizzard made the right decision. If a content creator says, hey, I don't want to cover your content anymore, then you say, okay, great, that's fine. We'll find somebody else. And that's exactly what they did. Some people are talking about, well, how come such and such creator got uh, access to the alpha even though uh, Preach didn't? Well, the majority of those content creators never said they don't want to cover Blizzard anymore. They don't want to cover World of Warcraft anymore. Almost none of them have said that. But Preach did. He did very publicly. Again, he said that for the right reasons. I, I, I can't disagree with any of the reasons he listed for not covering World of Warcraft content anymore, especially given at the time of when he said it and how bad the game was when he did it, right? He's got well-reasoned arguments and, 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 you know, very logical reasons for not covering the content. But, you know, things have consequences. And you talk about further on down the line, that opportunity may not be there further on down the line when he was talking about, you know, maybe potentially coming back if, you know, the things that they wanted, that he wanted to change, changed, then, you know, maybe he would consider it. But, you know, you don't get to decide that. And so when you've washed your hands of something, which is what he did, then it's not up to you anymore. And Blizzard made that decision and they made the right decision. They made a fair decision. Blizzard cannot be criticized for not giving him access to the alpha. He said he didn't want to cover it anymore. He said he was quitting the game. Not to say that he can't come back, but that doesn't mean that when you come back, you're just, it's going to be Blizzard welcoming you with open arms how that works you know so again do not do not get this twisted i i support preach 100 percent, and i support the reasons for why he stopped covering world of warcraft and i respect that he's probably interested and excited about the possibilities for dragonfly 100 percent, I, I support that and i would i would be, i think it'd be really cool if he got access to you know the beta coming up but i 100 percent understand and agree with blizzard not giving him access to the alpha on a technical standpoint so I don't think there's anybody that really has any criticism valid in that, that has any validity that you can level a blizzard for not giving a uh, preach access to the alpha. Oh, you did it because you were emotional. You did it because he was critical of your game. You did it because he didn't play for the side. No, he said he didn't want to anymore. You know, if you don't believe me, go watch his video. Watch the whole thing. He says it multiple times. Again, said he was quitting the game. If I was Blizzard, I wouldn't give him access either. I'm not going to give somebody access to a game that they say they're quitting. You know, especially or not, not prestigious early access. If you want to come back and play our game the same way everybody else, sure, fine. But you're not going to get access to something you said you didn't want anymore. So that's that's the whole situation. That should clarify everything. It's, you know, Preach really did say that he was quitting. He said they weren't covering it anymore. It's, it's not ambiguous. It's not up for interpretation. He said it multiple times, loudly, very clearly. Um, if you don't believe me, there's a link below. Click that link. It's the video. It's, it's not private. It, anybody can watch it. You can see the same thing I'm telling you. Um, but I wish Preach the best. I hope to God he gets access to, to the beta because I think he brings in a massive audience. I think it's really important to bring someone like Preach on side. I, can't, I cannot stress how important that is, especially as 
someone who's kind of this video journalist esque kind of person who, you know, is very knowledgeable about the game, knows what to look for, knows things, knows the things that are going right, um, th- knows the things that are going wrong, has the connections, and so on and so forth. Um, you know, I, I think someone like that is invaluable for Blizzard to utilize when you're trying to sort of reset your image in the public eye and you're trying to reset more or less the game to go back to your roots. I think someone like Preach, who has been there from the beginning, is massively important for that. Um, but, you know, the situation as it is, you know, nobody did anything wrong. Preach wasn't wrong for quitting the game and Blizzard wasn't wrong for not giving him access to it. It you know is what it is. So fairness, fairness where fairness is due. You know, um, that's really all I've got to say on the situation. So uh, if you've gotten this far, uh, you know, watching, thank you. I really, really appreciate it. It means a lot that you stayed around this long. Um, if you want, I'd really appreciate it if you hit like and subscribe. It means a lot. It helps me out. Um, it's just fun knowing that people enjoy this kind of content. But uh, if you don't want to, hey, I understand it. Just thank you for sticking around this long. But uh, that's all from me. So I will see you guys next time and stay safe. Cheers.